Hey, how you doing, sir? You okay? Mr. I'm Hisham. good, my brother. Good <laughs> seeing you again, my friend. Yes, man. Yes. You know, I've just been, I've been like following your work. I've been thinking, I love exactly what you do. Um, it's, it's just your whole approach to holistic health and just your choice of words. When you listen to the way how people express <laughs> their feelings about stuff, I can hear extreme passion <laughs> coming from you. you. No, Thank absolutely. You. I love it. So, you know, you're, you're a practicing dental surgeon and you're a, you're a doctor. Um, yes. what, what exactly does that mean exactly? Like, it, you know, how do people approach you? Like, are, are you a Dr. Hisham, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and you're a dental surgeon. All right. Did you, did you do loads of degrees? What's the deal? Like, talk to me. <laughs> okay. The, the simplest way I can answer this is um, Dr. Hisham has become my brand. So Hisham is my first name. And in New Zealand, we get called by our first names usually. Um, in Europe, in the US, and I studied in Europe. So I was always used to being Dr. Abdallah or you know, Abdallah. doctor and then your surname. But uh, in New Zealand, because everybody calls each other by their first name, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so I chose my brand to become Dr. and then Hisham as my first name. However, the whole point of a few question was how do I like how, how am I a doctor and a dentist? Well, I'm practicing as a dentist, so I'm registered with a dental council in New Zealand and Australia. And I, but when I graduated, I graduated in Prague in Czech Republic in '98. So '91 to '98, I was in Prague, and the degree that that I did was a medical university doctor of stomatology degree. So Basically, we studied with the medical, with our medical colleagues. Um, we did general surgery, we did internal medicine, we did epidemiology, the, the, the whole lot, basically. Literally, I held guts in my hands and helped deliver babies and, and, and the whole lot. While wow. Our studies, plus dentistry on, on, on the side. So when we graduate, uh, we graduated as doctors of medicine. And then we had the choice to register with the dental councils or well, w whichever country is called dental board, dental council, whatever that's called in different countries, or the medical. And I chose to go uh, register with the dental because I love working with my hands, creating art, but not just creating art as in paintings and carvings. And I, I, do, I do a lot of carving actually, just but useful devices. It's not art to go on, on, on tables. Like I've <laughs> carved up my katana holder for my brush and my brush itself was the okay, design. I cut these things myself first. <laughs> okay. So I love creating stuff with my hands, yet my main passion is helping human beings not just heal. Yes, heal because we're on a daily journey of, of healing at every single moment. Either we're either deteriorating or rege regenerating. Mm. Regenerating or regenerating all the time. So helping them heal, helping them become more aware um, and and, and you know, carrying my art in their hearts and in their minds and in their mouths, in, in their faces, in their smiles, because your smile is the, the brand you wear on your face. It's amazing, so, yeah. seriously. But I practice right. as a dentist. I can't say I practice as a doctor because I'm not registered as a medical practitioner. I'm not registered with a medical council. Mm. Um, however, I give a lot of advice. And as you know, this is where we met through the biohacking groups and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I create my own products and my own writings and I do coaching, I do NLP, I do leadership training. So I'm not really, you know, registered as a psychologist, for example. But of course, we help people with their psychology and all that. Because a really, a really good dentist, this is probably the best summary I could give you. That's really, really cool. Good, yeah, like a really everything. good dentist, an exceptional dentist is somebody who, <laughs> who helps humans become more aware. And yeah. um, they're, they're a good a good. Well, not just good. They should, they should be better and better all the time. So they should be an excellent human behavior moderator, an artist, a scientist, uh, a doctor, as in a physician, and like I said at the beginning, a, an exceptional human behavior moderator. Somebody who helps humans adapt and evolve, rather than just oh yeah, I'll just fix stuff. I just you know, a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic. I don't want to be a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit more deep than that. So you studied in. Um... Prague. In, what, in Prague. Well, did Czech you Republic, speak yes. Czech? I speak Czech very fluently because my okay. wife is Czech. Oh, yes. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you currently what, live in New Zealand? Live in New Zealand. You live in New Zealand. years now, 22 years. And where are you from though? Where, like, where yourself, where are you from? Excellent question. Have we got half an hour for that? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it very quickly. 
I was born in Sudan, Sudan uh, in, yeah. in, in Khartoum. My parents were born there, but their, their parents, so my grandparents are, are mostly Egyptian. So I've got Egyptian background, Turkish background, and African-African black uh, background, basically. Uh, okay. my, my grandfather was very tall, very dark. And uh, <laughs> so most of my bloodline, let's put it this way, most of my bloodline is, is Egyptian, but we were mm. born in Sudan. When I was a child and my sister was, was two years older than me, she was five, I was three, our parents went to work in Abu Dhabi. So uh, I grew up in Abu Dhabi as a child, basically, from three to 14. And then at 14, in 91, I went to Prague to study medicine. Uh, so I went to, to uni or to pre-med at 14. Mm. So yeah, from Sudan to Abu Dhabi, to uh, Prague and then graduated in 98 and came to New Zealand straight away. Amazing. Uh, uh, Global citizen. Part. I'm sorry? Global citizen. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You must have like <laughs> all these pages on your, on your passport. Um, but did, <laughs> at any point, did you, did you live in UK? No, never Not lived in the UK. Never, all no, right. I have, an, okay. I have an aunt who lives in the UK. Um, right. Who, who lives in London, Essex and Funny enough, she studied, she's the only one in the family who studied in Prague back in the 70s. She's a, she's a doctor. And okay. uh, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's fate or whatever, but when, when, when we finished uh, uh, our Cambridge exams, we were planning to come to the UK, actually. In, in, in 91, we, when we finished, myself and my sister, we finished school at the same time. We did our Cambridge IC, IGCSE exams in 91. And then we wanted to study dentistry in the UK. But that was the time of the first Gulf War, 91. Wow. Uh, the, the, the initial, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, big dramas then. <laughs> yeah. And since we were Sudanese, we had Sudanese passports. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm a New Zealand citizen now for 20-something years. Mm. But before that, we were Sudanese nationals at that time because for funny reasons, political reasons, of course. Sudan was standing with Saddam um, amongst a few countries in the world. So we were chastised like crazy baby wow like, hey yeah. i'm just a kid and you know i'm 14 and my sister was 16 and like hey we just want to come and study oh you know what a straight a straight a's blah 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 not none of that mattered basically yeah, we're paying privately of course nothing mattered so anyway so it didn't happen so we ended up in, in prague which was a blessing in, in a different way but at the time uh, yeah. i was like what why does why does anybody want us yeah. I've got stories about these things and stories and stories about by the way, <laughs> we'll say, human we'll say life and <laughs> unity and separations and isolations and condemnations and mm -hmm. treating people for what they're not. And oh, but yeah, let's, let's not go there for now. Yeah. But this <laughs> we'll this, this thing I call seeking home. Everybody's seeking home, a home base where they belong. It's not mm -hmm. a home to me is not a place where your body dwells because that could change. You could sell a house, buy a house, live in an apartment, whatever it's, have multiple have none doesn't matter uh, a home is where the soul belongs amongst other people it's not where your body dwells and a lot of us humans of all kinds of races and types and whatever because ultimately we're one race anyway it's a, it's a journey of one race it's not a race against each other mm. this whole life uh, are just seeking that um place to call home a place to feel we belong we can contribute and we're needed we're significant and uh, we're meaningful to the society and it's meaningful to us mm. and, and that, that's a real challenge some of us find it and many of us don't and then people go crazy when they don't yeah. even if they live in the best mansions or in the worst gutters it doesn't matter if you feel you belong you'll be all right if you don't feel you belong you don't have a home space you're just as depressed and mad as and, and nothing can save you. No money, no houses, no cars. Nothing can save you from, from loneliness. Loneliness is the worst so it's thing. It's so true, you know, like without getting too deep in my own personal story. But um, mm. at one point in my life, I lived with my dad and um, mm -hmm. I was undergoing a bit of, uh, you could say, depression because mm -hmm. um, like I was mentally abused by my dad and I ran away from home and I was homeless. But just for a short period of time, mm -hmm. however, I was homeless. However, How when I was sorry, homeless, how old were you at that time? I was 17, 17 wow. years old. Please yeah. continue. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify how old were yeah, you then. That's okay. And um, it's funny because at the time when I was homeless, I actually felt free. Like I didn't feel homeless. Interesting. I felt almost liberated. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt, oh my God, like this doesn't feel 
it, it, it logically it doesn't feel right but in my heart i feel free i feel better i feel at home there we go and it's That's something which you can't explain you just it's just a feeling and that is it you know it. um yeah. i just thought i'd share that little thing <laughs> beautiful man and thank you for sharing it, it, it just goes to, to to prove what i was just saying with I, I didn't know this part about you and exactly what i was just saying before you felt you belonged to that group that you are living living with whether it's on the streets or in a shelter or in a mansion you just felt you belonged and how can you explain that you, you don't have to explain it your mind was free your soul was free mm. where at other times before that you had a place to live in but you didn't belong there whether it was abuse or ignorant or being ignored or whatever it is yeah. your soul didn't belong there your mind didn't belong there you weren't free like you said mm. but once mm. you liberated yourself out of that the place where your body dwells doesn't matter. People sacrifice their bodies all the time. That's true. As long as their minds feel free, as long as their hearts and their souls are freed. Let's let's talk into let's let's start to move into all different areas of health. Now, if we were to just generalize health, what does health mean to you? How would you how would you describe it? Excellent question. And for many reasons. I try to define everything in words or, or sentences or statements for myself to clarify to me what I mean. Um, because if, if you can't speak, if you can't understand something, you can't define it simply, then you really don't understand it, which means you can't, you can't deal with it. So words, because I speak multiple languages, um, things that I do, things that I write, I just like to do, what, what does this word mean to me? And is it the same definition to, the, to my listener or my co-speaker? So with health, I wrote something in medical school while I was studying that I did not even understand at the time. It, it, it kind of came to me, like a lot of things just come to me. I write them down in my journals. And then later, they, they start to make more sense or I try to work on defining them. So I wrote, let's seek health rather than fight disease. Because I noticed that we we're just learning so much about disease and hardly anything about, you know, in, in, in first and second year, we learn anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology. And then we kind of ignore that totally from third year onwards. It's all about disease, 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 disease. Like, well, where, where did that stuff that we learned at the beginning go? Like, how do we maintain normal physiology rather than just disease? It was confusing to me. Not that I knew better, but I just don't know. Like, this, this, something doesn't feel right here. So I wrote that sentence, but I didn't even know what it meant. It was just like a kind of a mission statement. Let's seek health rather than fight disease. Mm. And since then, it's become my mission to fulfill it, basically. And it's across all my writings and across my practice wall when you enter the, the, the institute, my laser institute here. And it, it came with time to simplify the, the, what, I, what health means to me. And it's based on science, experience, knowledge, and common sense. Ultimately, it's sense. If it doesn't make sense, the science doesn't matter because science is just documented knowledge, basically. Mm. Health is a, is a dynamic state. It's a flowing state of the ability to balance back so it's not a static state we're not in in homeostasis as that word we use in physiology try, trying to keep homeostasis it's the ability to re-establish which is a constant process like right now you're sitting still i'm sitting still or uh, slight movements here i, I can't <laughs> speak without my hands <laughs> my hands speak more than, my, more than voice but generally we're just sitting but it doesn't mean there's nothing happening. There's billions and billions and billions of processes happening every microsecond, basically, to keep us in balance. But we're not actually balanced. We're balancing. So everything's an activity. It's not a noun. It's not a state. Well, it is a state, but it's a state of flow. It's not a, a static state. It's not like mm. <clears throat> something sitting on a bench. It's more like a flowing river. There's always flow. What's flowing in, what's flowing out, what's flowing through is either helping us maintain and re-establish and sustain balance where, where everything is working in our favor or disintegrating so we're regenerating or disintegrating that balance is going out, out of whack so it's, health is our dynamic state of being able the ability the capability the uh, the aptitude to maintain balance and re-establish balance mm. Wow, that was a very colorful way of expressing that. Thank you. Um, but even just your, your, your phrase or the, the slogan of um, 
Oh, what is it you said? Yeah, seek seek health Mm -hmm. rather than fight disease. Rather than fight disease. You know, that's been something that has been almost like part of my whole journey from, from when I was probably around eight years old. I remember I used to watch athletics and seeing these guys sprint on this on on the tv i was like wow i want to do that so then i went out i started running sprinting uh, you know uh, racing against friends and i noticed that i you know i had some good speed behind me you know i was i was winning a lot of races and i was like wow this is great i wasn't winning all of them but i was winning some so i was questioning how do i win them all i want to be the best Mm -hmm. so i was thinking you know, as I started to watch little interviews, you know, my young self watching these guys, they're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm eating this food and I'm eating that. And I had to keep my training up. And I was like, oh, so that's what they do. They eat good food and they train. So then I started piecing the things together. And as I started to piece more reasons for my goal, it just slowly grew into my lifestyle, really. And it, and it almost kind of like... Um, um, merged from from sprinting into other areas of fitness or not just merged but it's um it was like a goal huh evolved Evolved. that's the word evolved evolved because i wasn't going to sprint forever and the main reason i i gave that up it wasn't directly because i gave it up it was because my dad didn't approve of it you know he Mm. was like ah why are you doing all this running around sprinting and you know i was was going to competitions and i wasn't um I wasn't earning any money. I was doing it because I was really enjoying it. And, you know, I lived in a broken home, as they say. And, um, you know, we didn't have much money and you just saw it as a waste of time. So I ended up giving it up. I stopped competing. But I just had this, this burning desire for fitness. And I, I just, I was like, man, like this, this fitness thing, I really love it. I had no idea why I felt that way. I just loved it. So, um, yeah, it's like... You. Yeah, this it, is you basically. That's why it, person I was it's called upon you because it is you. It's, yeah, from the heavens, what, you know. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, I just found myself wanting to understand why things were like. You know, why is it one person is able to do something and another person isn't? And <clears throat> you know, there was different things that occurred in my life, and I, I realized that as as fit as I can be, could become. There were sometimes it was my mind that was holding me back. Mm. So then I was thinking, well, how do I improve this mind? Because I was already under the concept that you can't improve your mind. However, it is you, you've got to stick with that forever. If if you're if you're not intelligent, then that is it. You've you've lost it. That's it. That, you know, it was it was a sort of mentality that you know um, you're born with it or you ain't. Or you mm. ain't. You know, um, society you know, keeps telling us that all the time. Your exactly. Your personality is preset. Your your IQ is preset. Your da 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 da. Like, nah, uh, uh, uh. yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> We're humans. We adapt and we evolve as we wish to, and as our environment encourages us or discourages us from. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 really important to try and keep away from the noise <clears throat> of what society yeah. is saying, and that's the sort of thing I, I tend to try to explain on my social media for people to understand. But one thing which is pretty difficult is when you're trying to grow yourself mentally, but you're, you're living with people that are not really helping you to, uh, to grow, really. Um, let's say, I don't know, if you're in an abusive relationship, for instance, then it's, it's difficult for you to grow as a person because, you know, it's supposed to be two people working on the relationship together. But um, yeah, when I lived with my dad, that was one of the things he used to give me a lot of mental abuse as well as physical abuse. Um, so it, it was something that I needed to try and overcome. You know, the, my, my, my fear of failure was affecting my schoolwork. And then um, one thing that kind of like really saved me was uh, a guy called uh, Brian Tracy. Um, yes. I, saw, I, I, I came across, I was looking in a magazine and there was an audio book by Brian Tracy. Um, I can't even remember what it was called, but it was something to do with teach yourself how to think. And I was like, wow, you know, if I can, if I can teach myself how to think better, then wow, that I'd be so happy because <laughs> right now I hate myself. You know, I was just <clears throat> unhappy with myself, uh, just unhappy with like failing at so many things. I was good at running, but that was it. Um, 
So it was quite amazing to the moment I was able to think, have a, have a better mindset, then I was able to just achieve so much other things because I, I now started to believe that things were possible, you know? And then I started to implement, you know, the, um, different types of, uh, I didn't really know too much about meditation, but you know, I was like trying to practice visualization and, um, we learn, we learn. <clears throat> that's once it. our minds are open, we just let, let the flow in the good energy, the good vibes in, and we learn and we grow like, Hey, what more can I do? What about this meditation thing? What about that biohacking thing? What about this cold thing? What about that? Whatever it is, basically, uh -huh. it's, it's this plus that, plus that, plus that. But you've got to make the start and go on you for making it. And, and I think the simplest summary, you just said it, of, of this whole journey that, that you've been through and I've been through and a lot of us are going through, is when you started, in, in, I'm just quoting you now because it's it stuck in my mind, I just said, <clears throat> um, when you start to believe that things are possible, everything changed. Because before that, it is what it is and, that, and that's that. Yeah. You're miserable, you've got to be miserable for the rest of your life because that's what everybody tells you. Well, okay. And many people succumb to that. But once an opening happens in that sphere that's called the mind, which is an, act, an activity. Like, like I said, health is an activity. The mind is an activity. Everything is an activity. We're not, we're not things, you know, we're not, we're not human beings. We're not a thing. We are being human. We're actively being human. We are an activity and our mind is an activity that is manifesting through our bodies and through our, our expressions on earth and all that stuff. Once you make these little openings, whether you're seeking them or they're seeking you, it doesn't matter, but somebody, and usually it is somebody, um, pops up in your life, either in person or through an audiobook or through a, a written book or through an article or through a dream even. But somebody, a human being, comes into your life and helps you make an opening poof, into that sphere and suddenly the energy flows, that sphere grows and you never know where you're going to end up from, from then on. Once you believe that better is possible, or as yeah. you would say, that better is possible. <laughs> better. <laughs> better. <laughs> Make it better and better. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like when I listen back to certain, let's say, IG stories or podcasts, I'm like, wow, that is so British. <laughs> British. <That's> British. <laughs> oh man, hilarious. But let's wicked, talk about man, wicked. <laughs> I used to All be right, called so, Ali G back in back in med because uh, he used to DJ the last few years of my med school, okay. and that was when Ali G was a big thing. And I used to wear the, the, the yellow the yellow suit. I still have it somewhere. No hidden. way! <laughs> Just what, like with Ali the, G what, with the my... skull cap on your head as totally. well. Totally. And this would <laughs> I would grow the goatee, goatee. even a bit thicker. And like I man, <laughs> Julie. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, oh, that's really. hilarious. I would love <laughs> to see that. <laughs> All right, so. Um, yeah, on the, on the dental side, mm. I remember like listening to, to I don't know whether it was a podcast or one of your videos, I found it very interesting that you mentioned, <laughs> you said toothpaste is a detergent. Mm -hmm. in, in, in one, and I was like, oh my God, excuse me? Toothpaste mm -hmm. is a detergent? Can, mm -hmm. Would you be able to elaborate on why you say toothpaste is a detergent so that my listeners can can digest this and, and understand it from, from your perspective. Thank you. And you just made another opening in a, in a new sphere right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to fill that sphere with good energy now. It's not that I am saying that. It is that. <laughs> it's just that nobody ever sits down and thinks about it because we've been so brainwashed, so programmed by detergent manufacturers who put detergents and abrasives in lead tubes and sold it as toothpaste and then the lead tubes became plastic tubes and then other people copied copied them and said oh we'll make some natural detergent <clears throat> and take out take out the fluoride which is toxic yes the fluoride is, is toxic that's an absolute it's never part of human physiology anyway uh, and call that natural toothpaste well it's the same thing it's just detergent abrasive this is how you make toothpaste like honestly i'm, I'm joking aside now uh, how do you make a toothpaste in, 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 in basic chemistry class? My father was a biochemist, by the way, and my mother, um, well, he passed away. 
Uh, my mother is, is an ophthalmic surgeon, retired now. So we, we grew up in this medical family and my uncles are dentists and all that. So we took all these things for granted um, that we have medicines for free, we have toothpaste for free. We, have, we never paid for any of these things and we just did whatever you know, we got basically. And yet at the same time, my father was, I was obsessed with chemistry and biology and all these things as a child. We would talk a lot about ingredients and this and that and what things do and, and the chemistry and all that stuff. And yet we were still doing, you know, we, we had the, we knew the science of something and yet we were doing what society told us to do and what our medical fraternity told us. It was just such a weird yeah. dichotomy, like an, an oxymoron. <laughs> it's only when I literally grew up, graduated and found, found myself going, well, this stuff isn't working for me. Isn't working for anybody else. What's wrong with it? Oh shit! Everything is wrong with it. When you just think about it sensibly, how do you make a toothpaste? You put a detergent, a foaming agent, oh my god, an abrasive, and a humectant together, and you have toothpaste. Whatever else you add into it, good or bad or indifferent, is just little additives. So the fluoride is a thousand parts per million, good or bad. And I said it is bad, but anyway, let's just say it's 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 a little additive, um, essential oil, whatever fancy stuff you want to <clears throat> you want to call it. It's just a little teeny weeny drop in the ocean of what is toothpaste? What's, in, what's that whole thing made out of? Humectant, detergent, uh, and abrasive. None of which are for human internal use ever. Oh my Except God. when det detergent manufacturers did that and then they control the whole thing. <laughs> like, yeah, so I keep kidding? finding it funny. You, you wouldn't, I'll ask you a simple question. It's, yeah. we can go, I can go crazy on the science, but we don't have time for that now. And, and we just read that stuff anyway later. Yeah. sense would you and i'm talking to you personally roger but this mm -hmm. is the question would be to any listener who's listening now so you whoever's listening to me right now would you put toothpaste any kind of toothpaste natural toothpaste organic toothpaste colgate toothpaste whatever crap toothpaste you, <laughs> it's all the same crap in different bottles would you put that on any mucosa inside your body and i'm talking here anal mucosa or vaginal mucosa if if, if you're a woman would you or are you already going ew just because of what, what I said? Well, that's right. No, I would have. You're going ew. Like, what the <laughs> hell is this guy talking about? Thank you very much. I want that reaction, ew. Yeah. If it's not good for your anal mucosa, what makes it good or safe for oral mucosa? Your mouth, right? Yeah. Which is exactly the same as the other mucosa because it's one tube. This, the mouth, is the portal to your body. So the mind is the portal to everything that in our existence, that the mouth is the portal to your body. The first opening of the gut, same mucosa that goes all the way, all the way down to the other mucosa. If something isn't good for any part of your internal body, whether it's your guts or your mucosa or whatever, what makes it okay to put it every single day on that first part of that mucosa that's it's sensory? Mucosa is short for mucosal membrane. That's not skin. Skin is a barrier. And even then, most people worry so much about what they put on their skin, mm. so much. And oh, the absorption through the skin. And the skin is primarily a barrier, not a membrane. What goes through it is very little. And of course, yes, stuff does go through, but very little, because it's primarily a barrier. It's very thick and keratin and all that stuff. Mucosa is not a barrier. It's called mucosal membrane. It's a membrane. It's primarily a, a sensory organ. It senses everything that's going in and primarily a pathway into the body. It's an absorption pathway. So it's not a barrier, it's a membrane. Wow. And that, that's why it's very thin, there's no creatinization on it. Anything you put into your mouth goes into your blood instantly, instantly. <clears throat> and it, wow. it gets sensed and it, it sends a, a, a sensor signal to the rest of your body. Your vagus nerve reacts, your, 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 your sympathetic, your parasympathetic, everything reacts because it's sensing, is this food or poison? Is this food or foe? Wow. whatever's coming in it, that's how we we survive basically you taste something it tastes bitter or rotten whoop spit it out or vomit it out or whatever bef before you you load your system with it um, and vice versa you taste something oh this tastes good um, this is food basically you start to salivate so sympathetic shock vomit close in spit out shock back or parasympathetic mode which is vagus nerve ah food relax, breathe, enjoy, smile, activate your salivary glands. All this is vagus nerve. Salivary glands, when you salivate, that's, that's vagus nerve. 
Mm. Oh, because it's food, it's nutrition. Well, guess what? what? What do detergents do? Detergents are, and I'm just talking about the detergent part, not like the titanium dioxide to make it white, which is, which is carcinogenic, not the fluoride, like I said it's before. It's carcinogenic. The, not all the uh, titanium dioxide is no, mutagenic. No, yes, the stuff know. that makes, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can go into, like I, like I said, I can go into detail about so many things. Uh, so anything that makes a, a, a paste white is usually either in, in, in chemistry is either zinc oxide, which is, which is okay. Um, it, it's, it's not useful inside the body, but it's not toxic or titanium dioxide. And that is carcinogenic or mutagenic at least. Mutagenic. Anybody can look that up, titanium dioxide, um, <clears throat> but, or the fluoride or, or anything else. Uh, but detergents, I'm just talking about the detergent part because you asked me that question, yeah. which is soap. Soap a, <laughs> uh, breaks down oils, breaks down skin, breaks down, uh, you know, so many people are saying, don't, don't, put, don't put it on your skin on the outside and all these things. Well, why are we putting inside our mucosa all the time? It yeah. breaks down that mucosa. It makes it leak more. So we talk about leaky gut syndrome all the time. Well, mm. where does leaky gut come from? It's from leaky mouth because the mask is the primary part that leaks directly into the the rest of the gut down, as in food or non-food, any, anything you consume, and any substance that enters into your mouth will enter into your blood straight away before it gets digested or broken down or, 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 or invested. So anything that damages that mucosa, which is namely alcohol and detergents, those are the, the two biggest mucosal damaging substances in, in oral care in general. Um, mm. And we do it every day. I was like, hmm. Where is the healing part? Where's the nurturing part? We're damaging our mucosa. That's why people get gum recession more and more. That's why tooth decay is on the rise, not on, 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 the, on, on the decline and, and all these things because it, it's not helping and it's actually irritant. It's a constant irritant. It's mm. increasing the leakiness of your mouth into the rest of your body all the time. How is That's this? That's why I went and, and made, that, made, made products that include no toothpaste at all. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that a little bit later. Mm. But it's... Um, <laughs> It's insane, man. And I have to laugh reading, reading. each Just reading, time reading. you keep calling it a detergent. I, I, I find it so funny. Maybe <laughs> I'm laughing because it's, it's scary, you know, yeah. to think I'm, I'm using a detergent on a regular basis in my mouth. Ingesting it. Ingesting. So even if you don't swallow, mm -hmm. it's still a form of ingestion because it's soaking through is, is somehow what's, what's, what's going on there. Even if it's correct. in your mouth. What, what you said is, is correct. Even if you're not swallowing, you're ingesting because again, to go back to what we said earlier about defining words, you gotta, you gotta define the words that, that, that you're using and mm -hmm. understand exactly what they mean. The word to ingest <clears throat> literally means to take into the body. Mm, right. I mean, swallow. Um, and how do we ingest stuff into the, into the body, ingest it into the bloodstream? Three ways. <clears throat> One, and the fastest way is IV, inject intravenous into the blood. Obviously the fastest way. Hopefully we don't do a lot of that, that stuff and we don't do with, with weird <laughs> things. The second fastest way is transmucosal, through the mucosa, just because of what I said again before. Mucosa is a membrane. It's, it's a permeable membrane. It allows things in more than it protects things out. Mm -hmm. and so hopefully there should be good things. Uh, so transmucosal, two, the two ways we take things into the blood straight away through the mucosa are mucosa under the tongue, on the cheeks, on, on, under your lip, basically from the inside of your lips to your cheeks, to your throat, and the floor of your mouth, all that is mucosa. Then there's a little bit of gum, which is thick, that's protecting the teeth, the, the teeth roots and the bones around there. So, so gum makes maybe 20% of the mouth. Uh, the teeth make 20, another 20%. And the rest of the 60% of your whole mouth is mucosa. Like I said, cheeks, inner lips, under your tongue and all that stuff, which is the con same continuous mucosa all the, the way down. Mm. So that's mucosa. And of course, the same one is down underneath the anal mucosa. So that's why for kids, for example, uh, babies or kids who can't, uh, who can't taking a medicine or something, we give them suppositories. So suppository, immediate, immediate absorption through the anal mucosa. Mm. Exactly the same thing as, as with your mouth. You, somebody's dying, where do you spray the nitroglycerin? Under the tongue, instant absorption. 
drugs, mm -hmm. good drugs and bad drugs, by the way. Uh, you, you put them under, it's, it's not through your gums, it's through your, the mucosa under the lips. So people put the, all that stuff, even, yeah. you know, uh, tobacco, whatever, basically, people put it un, under the mucosa. Immediate absorption to, into the blood, immediate. That's amazing. I've always wondered about that because um, even today, I had a nootropic by tros Troscription. Do you know Troscription? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, because that's what they say, you put it right there. And like, I, okay. I don't know the science behind it, but I'm like, okay, I'll do that. And I put it there and yeah, it you know, in good time, all of a sudden I'm feeling a little bit fired up. Funny enough, okay. I took it just before going in the sauna and I'm normally okay with the sauna. Like, it's like, I'm used to it now. But when I took that and I went in the sauna, my heart actually started to beat a bit more. Probably because it's got it's got caffeine in there and it has um oh, it's got C B D and it's got a bit of nicotine wow. in there and there we go. Yeah. So yeah. So, so 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 the nicotine and the caffeine will inc will increase your metabolism. Mm. And, and nicotine is actually a good thing, clean nicotine, not yeah, yeah, yeah. other junk in the cigarettes, but the nicotine by itself. Uh, is, is a very good thing in, in small doses, of course, like the caffeine, it increases your metabolism, it increases your alertness and all that stuff. So that was already doing that. Then into the sauna, which is warming you up even more, <clears throat> improving the blood flow, like, whoa, hyper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh, man. And, and by the way, you don't digest. Okay. In general, everything that goes into our minds or into our bodies, we must digest. So everything we ingest, Okay, this is my quote, one of my quotes. Everything we ingest, we must digest. Right. That's overall. And to digest means you've taken this information, you've taken this energy, you've absorbed this energy, you've eaten this stuff, you've absorbed this thing through your skin, whatever it is, whatever it, that goes through must be digested, which means broken down, reassimilated, stored or excreted. Something happens with that. We can't, you know, we can't be exposed to something and then not do anything with it. Mm. subconsciously and consciously as well however when you absorb something through your mucosa or take an iv it goes into the blood directly so it eventually gets digested with by the cells and, and the metab metabolism inside <clears throat> inside the blood but it doesn't get pre-digested the conventional way of how we speak about digestion yeah i'm talking about digestion a bit more philosophically more holistically here or now but most people when we just say digestion we mean what happens inside inside the stomach and the guts and that's a very valid way of course a very normal way for us to digest food anything you swallow whatever it is food or non-food goes down gets dissolved in extremely strong acid in, inside the stomach so it's totally changed like it's it's got not no but I don't know, 80, 90% dissimilarity to what the original thing was, whether it's food or whatever. So everything just gets changed totally because it dissolves in, in huge amounts of acid inside the stomach. Then it gets, that acid has to be neutralized. So the pancreatic juice and the bile juice come out into the duodenum after the stomach chyme, all this acidic mulch comes out of your stomach. So it gets alkalized. Otherwise that acid dissolves your own flesh inside your guts and all these things. Wow. So that gets neutralized. So now it's again, the chemistry has changed dramatically. Now it goes through the rest of the intestine. Some of it goes through the, through the gut lining. And if you have leak, leaky gut, you will leak out a lot of gunk through, through, uh, through that. So, uh, and then it goes to your liver, then it gets processed. So the process of digesting anything that goes into, into your digestive tract through your stomach is one, very slow and two, very complicated, and three, very different to anything that goes directly into your blood. Do you know what I mean? What I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very different story. There's so many processes that have to go down chemically, biochemically, and, and the liver does its thing, and this does, by, by the time it gets to your blood from your digestive tract, it has changed drastically, whatever you, whatever you put inside your body. But whatever you put on your mucosa, as it is, bam, into your blood. Good or bad, that's the question. Wow. Is it good for me or is it bad for me? Do I do, I do more of this or less of this? What do I moderate? You know, that's, that's if, if you want to summarize health, it's bam, balancing, like I said, is awareness and moderation or multiplied by moderation. B-A-M, bam. So what do I need to be more aware of so that I can moderate? Something's down, moderate is to modulate, actually. 
the stronger word is modulate than moderate. What mm. do I modulate up? Increase frequency, uh, increase quantity, increase whatever, do more of, versus what do I modulate down? Take it down, eliminate it maybe, yes, but or just take it down infrequently. It's all about modulating. We're, we're always you know, going up and down in waves, just mm. awareness and modu modulation, awareness modulation. I think a lot of people definitely need to be aware of the detergent, man. Like, yeah. seriously. I mean, it's, it's just in the stores as normal. People don't know that they're buying detergent on a regular basis and everything that is going on in their body. It's, it's it, man, we're just under const, constant attack by all these chemicals, which Marketing. has been, yeah, marketed to us as convenience um or healthy um it's it's insane you know yeah. all these antibacterial stuff which people are just buying in abundance now i'm like oh my god yeah. what's going on it's it's yeah. insane you know all the chemicals around the house <laughs> i mean i used to wear aftershave on a regular basis but i i don't wear that anymore um man I, i'm just so careful with 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 everything now try i've still got some plastic around the house um i'm just trying to reduce that as as much as possible um it's it's, it's insane but anyway uh, let me just move okay. slightly away from that and there was one thing you spoke about which was um what was it <laughs> nano hydroxy appetite mm -hmm. i don't know did i say it correctly Nano you did, my man. Yeah. Okay. So, um, nano hydroxy appetite. Yeah. Um, wh what is it, and and how does it benefit us? Okay. Hydroxy appetite is a uh, a bound molecule of calcium and phosphate. M multiple, I think, CO two, PO four. Some I forgot the, the exact formula, but anyway, it's uh, calcium and phosphate bonded together to make this new molecule basically new structure called hydroxyapatite and that's the main mineral molecule of all teeth and bones human teeth and bones actually all mammal mammal teeth and bones right so uh, bones are basically a collagen matrix with impregnated impregnated mineral in it so it's not stiff it's actually there's a bit of malleability and that's why when we get too stiff we snap um that's that's a whole different thing when you lose the, all the collagen all the, the matrix then um then you become brittle like glass basically wow. that is actually a real disease there was a, which which movie was that uh, samuel l jackson played that oh uh, um and bruce willis was the yeah he was the, the hero, hero isn't it so you know, yeah, Samuel Jackson was the was the supposed to be like the villain, exactly the villain because he was breaking like glass and he yeah. and he found his 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 meaning to life in the hero. Um, anyway, you know what yeah, I mean. So, yeah, um, yes. Yeah. So, so so uh, so hmm. bone brittleness is too much mineral, not enough collagen, so balance. But anyway, back to your question, which is the nanotoxic that that's the mineral that makes up human and all mammal teeth and bones other than the collagen and, and all the other parts. So, um, and also it is required in the um, pituitary gland. The pituitary gland vibrates. There's, there's always vibrations and sensations and, 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 and changes in EMFs and, and, and energy fields basically. And there is hydroxyapatite in, in the pituitary gland as well. So when we talk about replacing minerals for bones and teeth not replacing but replenishing let's put it this way we're not trying to replace something we're trying to replenish it so it, the balance continues because we're always losing mineral and gaining mineral it's always a constant flow what the calcium that's in your teeth is not sitting there as calcium it's calcium phosphate or, or the hydroxyapatite and, and in your bones as well but it doesn't sit there it's not the same molecule that was there last year that is there now it's changed if you're losing some gaining some losing some gaining some as i said the same word again balancing 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 when that process goes out of balance as in you're losing more than you're gaining then stuff starts to happen 
tooth decay, dental erosion, uh, bone weakening, bone, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So we, we must continue to replenish the mineral itself as well as the environment that the mineral can function in and the biochemistry that allows all this to happen. And of course, the microbiology, the microbiome that's helping us do all these things. So when we make an all care product, it should be good for the whole human, like we said, not just safe, but yeah. good yeah. and beneficial. Yeah. It's, it's all benefit or, or, or not. If it's not beneficial, why are you doing it? Other than safe, okay, safe, fine. I can use just water, water is safe to clean with. Yeah, but what, what is it doing? What's the benefit? <laughs> so nanohydroxypatite nano is one of those main minerals that we should be looking Nano just means it's, it's a nanoparticle, so it can right. go in directly as it is. Right. It's absorbed as it is versus just providing the calcium and the phosphate and then letting the bones and the teeth and, and all that absorb them separately and then recombine them. And for that, we have to have vitamin D3, vitamin K2 in abundance, and of course, always an alkaline environment. But if it's already the, the pre, pre-made nanohydroxy appetite, it remineralizes, that's, that's the word. What, what does it do? It remineralizes teeth and bones. And what does it come in a form of? Like, could you get it's it from powder. food? Huh? Oh, Nanohydroxyapatite? Yeah. Like, what uh, do, no, you, do you get it it's, only? It's, 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 it's a synthesized powder. It's a, it's, synthesized. It's, a very, it's nanoparticles. It's a very, very, very delicate little powder, basically. Right. Uh, there wouldn't be too much nanohydroxyapatite in, or, or hydroxyapatite in general, in food per se. There would be a lot of calcium, a lot of phosphate, a lot of other uh, forms of calcium and, and phosphate, because uh, you wouldn't get calcium free floating or anything. Free, it's, it's always a combination. It's a salt. It's a calcium carbonate or a calcium um, uh, salt that, that's in, in the food, or phosphate salt, obviously. But uh, unless you eat bones <laughs> <laughs> or you know, bone broth probably would, would have a bit of hydroxyapatite uh, because some of that calcium would, would dissolve out, especially if, if you put a little, bit of, a, little bit of, a little bit of acid in there. So you shouldn't be drinking acid. So you shouldn't be drinking lemon juice or kombucha or any acids all day long or, or, or orange juice or alcohol, all these acids, these, these crazy acids that keep all healthy. Drink lemon juice all day long. That's stupid. That's just dissolving your mineral. But if you put a load of acid in your bone broth, so a bit of lemon juice or a bit of vinegar in, while, you, while you're cooking the bone broth, it dissolves the mineral out of the, out of the, uh, uh, the bones. Yeah. And now you've got bioavailable calcium phosphate. And of course, some of it will be as, as the whole thing, as the hydroxyapatite. And you're taking it, uh, taking it in. Dude. So as, as long as the acid is neutralized, we, we, we eat acids, yes. <clears throat> I have we never we heard of it before. We neutralize them when we're chewing them. But drinking, we don't neutralize. When we drink acid, we don't neutralize it. It's, well, okay. it has to be neutralized, but it's being neutralized by force almost, by right. sucking out the mineral. But when we're chewing food, we're producing saliva. Saliva is alkaline already with calcium and phosphate and bicarbonate. That's what we make in our bodies to neutralize acids. So it's neutralizing the acid as it goes through. Or it's already had it's mixed in the food with something that is neutralizing it. So green leaves, chlorophyll, that's alkaline, bone, um, bone broth or, or anything that has calcium and phosphate will neutralize the acid before you ingest it. So right. either neutralize it first or neutralize it by chewing it. So chewing acidic, something that has some acid in it, like fermented, um, fermented uh, uh, kimchi <clears throat> or sauerkraut. sauerkraut great source of probiotic bacteria and all these things it is acidic but you're chewing you're neutralizing it inside your mouth and before that goes down your guts but if you're drinking kombucha that's pure acid and sugar and alcohol actually because it's a, fer- it's a fermented product with a, with a little bit of, of of good bacteria that's that's not a thing you should drink all day long it's it, it never was anyway it was always like a a, cer- a ceremonial drink uh, occasionally with food and so on and so forth, and freshly made, not bottled, sold every day, just drink it like a, like a fizzy drink, and all fizzy drinks are the same, sugar, uh, um, sugar and det- uh, not detergents, <laughs> sugar <laughs> and acids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sugar and acids all the time. So, yeah, so that's 
because then that acid would leach out the hydroxyapatite out of your teeth, out of your bones, whatever it is. It has to be neutralized. We're Can I ask? Thing, remember, what, why is it never spoken of? I, I, I have never heard about literally only until I think watching a video of yours where you was talking about this nano hydroxyapatite, but I, yeah, haven't heard about it before ever. So is, did you say this is supposed to be in, in toothpaste? Yes. If, yeah? if you're making something to claim that you're helping well, a product that's claiming to help somebody with, with a, either avoid, we're not talking treatment here because this, 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 these are not medications or drugs, not, not just my products, but toothpaste in general or, and, and, and all these things. None, um, they're personal care cosmetic products. They're not, they're not medications. That's why you just buy them anywhere. And anybody makes, like anyone, and, and everyone does actually. Every, you know, the Kardashians make a toothpaste and, <laughs> and ev like, literally every man and his monkey makes a toothpaste of some sort or whatever. Because uh, it's literally just just that, just that, um, and um, w when you, well, in my opinion, but like I, I don't know, <laughs> should I call it my opinion? I mean, shouldn't that just be common sense? When mm -hmm. you make a product that is sold as um, that and promoted as health promoting, let's put it this way, because it's not not a treatment, not a drug here, uh, health promoting or good for you, shouldn't it just be good for you then? Like, I don't know, I, I, it, might, it might be weird or it might be a strange question, but shouldn't it be like, really? Or just, you know, whatever. Uh, it's so, supposed to be good for you. Uh, exactly. So what, what is this product for? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's an oral health supplement or an oral health uh, promoting product or whatever. Well, okay, great. So what is oral health? Um, that's your toothpaste or your product or whatever is doing. Oh. It's supposed to balance your uh, your pH. Really? We're supposed to do that? Yeah. So acids are bad. Alkaline is good. Let's alkalize your mouth. Well, okay, interesting. Does your product do that? No, it doesn't. Okay, fine. Uh, it actually acidifies even more. Well, how crap. Uh, antibacterial. Kill all the bugs. Well, are we killing all the good bugs? Uh, well, no, we should kill all bugs. No, we should never kill the good bugs. We should kill the bad bugs. And it's not we should kill them. We should create an environment and keep recreating that environment that grows, that nurtures the good bacteria, which simultaneously would be nurturing our own cells while suppressing the bad bacteria and the fungus and, 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 and all of the bad stuff. So it's nurture and suppress at the same time because it's the environment. The milieu, as the French would say, the milieu um, will, is, is what determines the biology and the biology for grows in it. So it's not kill bugs, it's kill bad bugs. But at the same time, primarily, what are we nurturing? So before you go for killing, go for nurturing. We yeah. nurture this more, okay, which means we suppress these guys. Fine, let's go for that. So does it do this? Okay, what does it supplement? Oh, it's adding back what's missing or what's being consumed. Okay, great, so what's missing? Fluoride, no. There's no fluoride that's ever missing in, in humans. <laughs> it was never part of human physiology. Literally, there's no textbook on earth, physiology textbook or, or biochemistry textbook that says ingredients of human saliva or ingredients of human bones or uh, fluoride. Never. Can we just open that one up? Can we, can we get into that one? Because we, that's, we that's a question which a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people would want to know. You know, do we need fluoride? I've heard different reviews on, 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 on most of it to do with like toothpaste. What is your professional view? <laughs> I, I need to hear about fluoride and its purpose. It's, it's very simple. What, what I, and, and I started answering it just, just now and I'll, I'll repeat it, repeat it, but also simplify it even, even further. It, uh, is fluoride as a, um, obviously you never get fluoride ions floating, floating like, anyway, fluorine is a gas. It's a highly toxic gas and, and you, can't, you can't find it. You really, you've got to make it. Um, so fluor, fluoride comes from fluorapatite. Again, fluoride bound to calcium as it, these beautiful crystals that exist in nature, leave them alone. And that's, that's how nature binds fluorine, the, the element fluorine, it binds it 
into that calcium so it doesn't dissolve because it's highly toxic to all uh, all living matter basically it, wow. to, to bacteria to algae to animals to humans to everything Fl fluoride whether it's fluorine gas or fluoride ions highly 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 toxic it's the most oxidative uh, the strongest oxidizing agent known to humankind basically so it, it's highly toxic so that that's 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 a fact basically that's just simple toxic or simple chemistry this is not an opinion this is not medicine this is not dentistry this is nothing this is just basic elemental science chemistry biochemistry <laughs> toxicology okay fine <laughs> let's go let's let's go to humans and I, I said that just a minute ago is there anything that is that is a um a vital process in the, in the human physiology that requires fluoride no so it's toxic yes we know that either cumulatively like little amounts just like lead cumulative amounts of lead highly toxic or one high dose highly lethal either way it's it's a toxic it's a toxin it's not like water you drink too much water you'll die yeah but do you know how much water we talk about we're talking 14 liters and, and you'll die well you'd be stupid to drink that much in the first place if you can if you can't even do it but okay so everything has a lethal point yeah but we, you can't call water toxic just clean water I'm talking about not what's in the water because you you stupidly drank 14 liters you couldn't excrete them and, and you overload i mean you know there's silliness and there's direct labels water is not toxic but yes yeah. it has a lethal dose of 14 liters in, in an hour like hey good luck if you can do that <laughs> but <laughs> with with toxins when we when we talk in toxicology or, or basic chemistry what's a toxin it's either something that has a, a low lethal dose so like five milligrams or five grams or whatever will kill you that's called a poison basically yeah. cyanide or whatever or the same thing over that accumulates in your body over time so a little bit of it you lick lead you won't die you lick mercury we all did that actually we all have mercury in our bodies that's another thing let's not go there right now mercury fillings and all these things mm -hmm. uh, but mercury lead um, uh, cyanide a lot of a lot of these uh, toxic metals you touch them you lick them we would all actually you and i literally our generation you and i the next ex generation we would not exist today let alone our children or whatever we physically wouldn't exist if lead was was that toxic that touching it or whatever or breathing a little bit of it would have killed us because all of our parents technically and, and all of our, our, our grandparents would have already gone extinct we wouldn't right. have survived because lead was everywhere in the paint, in the, uh, yeah. on the walls, in, 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 in toys, in the petrol. We all breathed it. We all ingested it because it, it, it got burned by planes and cars and then fell on the ground. So lead is toxic and we yeah. stopped it. Finally, it's, it's like, oh, enough, enough is enough, but it's toxic by cumulative. Same thing with fluoride. So it is, there is no such thing as a, uh, a fluoride deficiency disease. <laughs> it, 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 it can't exist <laughs> exactly because it was never part of the human body that is now missing that now we need to replenish right. so, you know there's a like scurvy is a vitamin c deficiency it's a severe deficiency of, of vitamin c right scurvy mm -hmm. you put vitamin c in back in and the scurvy starts to go away the collagen stops breaking down and the bleeding the bleeding starts to stop oh great goiter iodine deficiency we need iodine Otherwise, we die if we don't have iodine. Great. Fluoride, do we need fluoride? No. Do we die without it? No. Is it missing in, a, in the human body? No. Because it actually, by the way, iodine and fluorine, they, they're both halogens, they compete with each other. So fluoride right. destroys, your, 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 destroys your iodine reservoirs and your iodine receptors. So iodine is, is the anti-fluoride, technically. Wow, wow. Fluoride is the anti-iodine. Iodine is essential for the human body. Well, when it stops the human body, so can I ask? No such thing as a deficiency, therefore we don't need it, and it stops. Well, okay, so people who, no, what, what what happens if you have a fluoride, you know, toxicity in the body? Like, what's what's a, an indication? What are the symptoms of you know if you got some toxicity of it? It's very very variable. It depends on 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 where it's accumulating. Its main target is, is calcium. It, it, lo it loves, not it loves, nature 
or God designed it this way, that mm. fluoride binds to calcium. That's why, like I said, in nature, it's a natural substance. Every, every substance is a natural substance. Everything's fine in nature somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just leave it where it is. If it's not good for humans, don't, don't ingest it. Don't ingest mercury or, or uranium or cyanide because they're natural. Yes, they're natural substances. Just leave them there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave the mercury in nature. <laughs> leave cyanide bound to where it's bound. Um, so same with fluoride. It, it binds to calcium. In the human body, calcium is in bones. In teeth, and your teeth. So it blood. binds to the calcium in your teeth. All right. Just leave, leave out the word teeth, please. Okay. Because that's the bullshit that we're being sold. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It binds to calcium. Right. And that's what I was saying. Calcium is where? Calcium is in bones, in teeth, in brain cells, in, 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 sure. like it's in the pituitary gland. Um, well, pituitary gland specifically because it requires the vibrations of those uh, hydroxyapatite particles. It's part of how it functions. But calcium also is in every, in every cell in, in the human body and throughout your blood. Calcium is not, again, this is the, the big bullshit of we're being sold, even though it's totally non-physiological and nonsense. This is calcium, your bones are calcium. No, calcium is everywhere. Without calcium, there's the calcium pumping channels. Your muscles won't work without calcium. Your heart doesn't work without calcium. Calcium is not a thing. It's part of a thing. You know, but also it's part of every other thing. So all of that calcium floating around, once it's bound, bound to fluoride and becomes this fluorapatite, it's non-usable by the body. And yet right. all they keep telling you, teeth, 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 like the hell is what teeth make 20% of the, of, of the <laughs> mouth, let alone by percentage, what is that of the whole body? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nothingness. Very minute, yeah. We, we need teeth to smile, to look good, to be able to chew, to digest our food. That's it. But they don't control us. They're, they're just slaves in here. This is the master. This is the whole, the whole thing. Uh, you know, oh, so you mean fluoride is going to go throughout the whole body, leave all the calcium in the whole body and just find teeth and go, ooh, this is my target. Like, really? <laughs> That's how it works? Are you guys crazy? So I have these debates with my colleagues all the time. I'm like, where is this stupidity coming from, guys? Like, seriously. Uh, and of course, when you get, yes, when you get too much fluoride in, in, in your teeth, which is very common these days, everybody in their 20s, 30s, 40s these days has some form of mild to severe fluorosis, which is too much fluoride, because now it starts to break down uh, the, the, the fluorapatite. It destroys the fluorapatite. Sorry, the hydroxyapatite, because hydroxyapatite is calcium and, flu and, and phosphate. Fluorapatite is fluoride in, replacing the calcium. That's brittle. Right. People get mottled teeth. People get weaker teeth. And I'm like, you're saying it strengthens teeth. It weakens teeth. Wow. What is it doing to the rest of the body? That's what is insane. it doing to the rest of the body? Mm. That it's is just the body. teeth. Yeah. Calcium. Yeah. We're all flowing calcium channels. Mm. And, 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 and you, you're in bodybuilding. You've, you've got the muscles, bro. I don't have the muscles. <laughs> you would know about calcium at least a little bit. <laughs> Right? Well, uh, at least sure, in, in your studies, you were told about calcium, the calcium channels and the calcium pumping the heart and, and, and the muscles and all these things. So we need calcium, we need magnesium, we need sodium, we need potassium. All of these minerals are vital minerals in a constant flow throughout the body, not just for bones and teeth, for heart, for, for muscles, for brain, for everything, basically. And of course, they're modulators, the vitamin D3, vitamin K2. So all these things that I just mentioned now, are what we need to be talking about, focusing on, replenishing, replacing. And yet we all get stuck in the floor, I think. Like, where the hell did that come from? I know. It's never part of human physiology. It's toxic and it distracts the whole conversation away from what we should be doing. Nobody has ever, ever, until today, it, it doesn't even exist. Not, not just, because I started 20 years ago doing some of this stuff and then evolving it myself, of course, and all these things. Ever, until today, done what I just said, create a, an oral health care supplement for the mouth, the portal to the whole body that includes what I just said. I just, I just said it now in the conversation, mm. calcium in a bioavailable form that's available for the human body, not calcium carbonate, like in toothpaste. It contains calcium. It says, you read it, it's calcium carbonate. That's chalk. That's not available for your bones, your, your teeth. You've got to dissolve an acid first and da-da-da-da-da. So calcium, phosphate, magnesium, 
potassium, sodium. If you're going to put a sodium salt and we need sodium, you've got to put the equivalent of potassium. You've got to balance it. That's how the body works. Calcium, magnesium, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, organic oils that heal, oxidizing agents that oxidize the anaerobic bad bacteria while they provide oxygen, an oxygen-rich environment for the good bacteria, and so on and so forth. Nobody's ever put all that together into an all healthcare supplement. Like, okay, I'm gonna do that then. I said, yeah. great, that's, that's literally what I did. I didn't invent yeah. ingredients or invent physiology or invent whatever, I invented a method to recombine everything that we know to get in flow with human physiology, to replenish the whole balance in the math and in the guts and the microbiome and the microflora. So as we are talking about that, so you, mm. you've created these uh, oral, oral um, health products um, you got the you got the teeth serum, and you've got Correct. the alkaline uh, mouth rinse, rinse. Yeah. and um, you've also got these uh, xylitol yeah. mints as well, right? Yes, xylitol mints, and the uh, bamboo toothbrushes. Yes. Um, do you have anything else? Are those are the those are the main products. Uh, the, there's the <clears throat> so there's the uh, organic dental detox powder which is a tooth whitening powder, but it's primarily a detox powder. So it absorb, absorbs stains, absorbs gunk in your mouth and gets rid of it with diatomaceous earth, which is very fine organic silica basically, uh, as well as an oxidizing agent um, in it as well that kills the inner bacteria, but whitens teeth. So that's the dental, organic dental detox powder the like you said the serum the, the serums are the main thing that you use every day to to brush your gums and your teeth it's all for gums and teeth gums and teeth thereby feeding the microbiome cleaning everything healing everything replenishing everything thickening your skin protecting your mucosa sealing your mucosa instead of breaking it down all the time you know like we just talked about the mucosa with detergent yeah seal it put oils on it cocoa butter organic cocoa butter organic coconut oil carrying other oils in them as well. And yeah, the, the alkaline math rinse comes in the bottle, obviously. So it's again, the world's first organic, uh, sorry, the, the world's first alkaline math rinse. So like the human saliva should be pH eight, mm. right? Let's mimic that. Again, I, I didn't invent a, a process. I invented a, a, a method to re <laughs> replenish the physiological process. Yeah. What's the pH of saliva? Eight. What does it contain? This, this, this. Therefore, when it goes miss, missing, things go, go to hell. Gum recession, tooth decay, gum disease, erosion, da, 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 and, the, and bad digestion and everything else. Great, let's replenish that. Fantastic. What ingredients what we, we, we already have and know are scientifically documented that we can put together. That's how I put it all together. I, I didn't try that one. I haven't tried that. I've got to get we myself We haven't tried, one. tried the rinse first. because No. The, the system, the holistic system that I've created is you rinse with the, with the alkaline math rinse first which okay. means you stimulate your saliva, you alkalize your mouth, you start that flow going, mm. and you, while you're breaking down any plaque, because it, it breaks down the stickiness mm -hmm. of plaque, because plaque only sticks because of the bacterial uh, glycoproteins, basically, that they, that they make, they, and the polysaccharides, they actually stick together and stick to your teeth and to your gums and all that. So you're breaking them down biochemically while you're agitating this in, inside your mouth, as soon as you get into the bathroom. So you go, into, go to the toilet, go to the shower in the morning and, or in the evening, just put the math rinse in your mouth, rinse, 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 two to five minutes while you're already, you use it that time anyway. Instead yeah. of being on the phone, don't take the phone to the bathroom. Uh -huh. clean, clean your mouth, start your salivation, which means parasympathetic nervous system, like I said again, the vagus nerve. If you're salivating, that's vagus activation. This activates your vagus already. Rinse with it, spit out, then use this biobalanced gum and toothbrush. The whole thing is ergonomically designed. I, I cut this out myself, basically, and 25 prototypes and 12 months to design this brush. Wow. Super soft bristles. You're massaging your gums and your teeth. So you're cleaning your gums and your teeth, but you're massaging, improving blood flow, again, salivating even more, more parasympathetic, using the serum, which is, like we said, oils, xylitol, and biminerals. So all, all of what I just spoke, you said about the xylitol, I, I was talking about the minerals, I then I spoke about the oils, all that is what makes up the serum, it's not a toothpaste. You can put it, by the way, anywhere in the human body or on the human body. 
literally. Mm -hmm. Yes, I make it for the mouth, but it's for the human. So you can stick it up you want to do with it. You've got, yeah, we, we have people using it for everything. Uh, uh, colleagues using it for their kids, bum rash, you know, their, their little nappy rashes, whatever. Uh, use it anywhere. It's, it's good for all of you. I've, I've you got know. my daughter using uh, your serum. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Every day. I don't have her using the, the normal toothpaste. I, I need to get rid of it myself. I use it sometimes. Because but but you're I, conditioned. I, I was conditioned for years. Oh, bro. I was conditioned it's, for years. It's terrible, man. Uh, detergent. I like, never paid for, for toothpaste, like I said. But you know what annoys me the most, by the way, now that we're talking about this again? It's not the conventional tooth. Well, I've got an issue with them. Yes, the conventional toothpaste, the ones that actually made toothpaste a thing in the first place in the 19th. Call it we were the first company to put, like I said, detergents and and abrasives in, in lead tubes and sell them to the world. And then everybody else copied them, big companies, small companies and all that. What annoys me the most these days, especially, is the other, the so-called natural organic toothpaste companies that are every detergent manufacturer or that, like I said, a man and their monkey and, and celebrity or whatever is making a toothpaste, whatever, oh, we, ours is better, it doesn't have fluoride, but other. What makes it better than the other crap? Nothing. Oh, but ours has oils. Um, or coconut oil or whatever. This is how you use coconut oil, by the way. These people either do not understand chemistry, biochemistry and physiology or choose to be ignorant of it. And in, in both cases, it is not okay because you're making stuff that goes into humans. If, I try, if, I, if you sell me the truth, I have freedom of choice to buy whatever I want. I can use drugs, I can drink alcohol, I can whatever or, or not, that's my choice but it shouldn't be sold to me as good for me, right? Mm -hmm. um, with this, it's, it's, it's just, ah, because when you say, okay, no fluoride, okay, great. So it's not, this part is not as toxic as the other. What else? Oh, uh, it has calcium. Really? Calcium carbonate. Yeah, it has calcium. That's marketing claim. <laughs> is it truly calcium available for the human body, for the human mouth and body? Uh, they don't know because it's just an abrasive calcium carbonate. It's not a source of calcium. It's just an abrasive chalk, okay? Um, it has oils. Really, you put oils in your toothpaste and you make a claim that those oils are there as in with benefit? Oh, yes, they are. How, my friend? How, if you understand basic anything? What do you use soap for in your bathroom, in your kitchen? You have a pan and you just cooked with some whatever, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, whatever, full of oil. How do you wash that oil out? What do you do? Soap, detergent, two drops of detergent. The oil goes, can you visualize what I'm, what I'm seeing now? Yeah. The, uh -huh. the oil is on the water. You put two drops of, of, of detergent oil. So basically what happens to the oil? It's you can see it, right? Yeah. It just yeah. splays right out. Right in front of, before you even brush it or touch it, it, just, it breaks the oils like that. So what are, you, what are you saying by putting essential oil or tea tree oil or coconut oil or any oil in a soap mix and blend it together with silica and detergent, put it in tubes and call it toothpaste with oil. That oil is, excuse the French, effed up. You just, effed, there's, there's no oil left in there. You put in oil, but it doesn't contain oil. This is just mulch now. So why are you lying? Like this is this is what annoys me in this in this other part of the arena. It's like all these natural, and you go to um, Whole Foods or whatever, and, and you see rows and rows of natural toothpaste and this toothpaste. BS. Mm. None of it is natural for the human body. It's all abrasive detergent and whatever oil or something that they say they put in it. As, as long as it's got a, a, a coke oil sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate or any of these soap, if, if, if it foams, it can't contain oils, period. No matter what you put in in the first place, it's all mulched up, it's all gone. And the rest is absorbed by the silica, the abrasive, because that's what silica does, it absorbs everything. So are you really using coconut oil toothpaste? No, <laughs> you're just using abrasive detergent and some mulched up, uh, some mulched up remnants of oil debris, basically. It's like, come on, guys. Oh, so here yeah. we do not have any detergents, any abrasives, any uh, 
course, no toxins and it's all vegan and halal and kosher and all that stuff. But the main thing is the chemistry. The chemistry of it is oils are oils and they accentuate each other by minerals, the calcium, phosphate, magnesium, and, blah, 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 and sodium, potassium, and all, uh, bicarbonate, zinc, and all that is, is in there. The biominerals dissolve in water and the xylitol dissolves in water as well. So it's homogenized, but it's not, it's, there is no soaps to break down the oils and there is no um, emulsifiers that, that again, a lot of them, hemectins and emulsifiers that are used like polysorbates and all that stuff, they're bad for the human body long-term. But they're, and, and the benzoate preservatives and all these things. But their main function is to kind of emulsify the water and the fat into each other. That now becomes a whole new structure. Yeah. I don't use any emulsifiers here. The, the way we, emul not emulsify, homogenize this is by blending it in a very strong blender. Uh, it, took me, it took me years actually to, 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 to be able to make this serum because every chemist that I spoke to said, oh no, no you can't have 30% oils regardless of what they are basically coconut oil cocoa butter oh you want cocoa butter in in a toothpaste first of all i'm not making a toothpaste for god's sake <laughs> <laughs> but okay it's not a toothpaste it's a whole it's a serum okay fine cocoa butter mm, interesting um and with all this water soluble powders the, the minerals that doesn't work uh, you have to use emulsifiers and stuff i said no no emulsifiers anyway so long long story short after a few years of testing and trialing we just beat them up, basically. It's just blended, 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 blended until it's homogenized. So the oils are oils, and the, the, the water slug minerals, are, but they're just homogenized as a serum. But there's no detergents, no emulsifiers, nothing changing their structure. So when I say this, there is oils in here, there is oils in here that absorb through your skin and absorb through your mucosa and absorb through your gums to That's carry awesome. through the vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 for example, which are mm. fat-soluble vitamins. Separate to the part where it's got the biominerals, the nanohydroxyapatite, which dissolves in water, and so on and so forth. If somebody wanted to create their mm. own mouthwash, mm -hmm. just, man, I don't even know. What would you call a mouthwash? Like, is it another, just another form of detergent? We don't even need to get into that, but... Like if I just wanted Very to create, simply, most of them are alcohol, alcohol and acid, uh, alcohol and acid cocktails, basically. That's yeah, ninety percent of the mouthwash, including the most of the the ones that say natural. And please read the ingredients. Don't, I don't want people to believe me. I want you yeah. to believe yourself. Believe with me when this makes sense to you. Go and read the ingredients. A That's lot of the ingredients you, you probably wouldn't Look understand. Them up, one by one. Mm. Go put a, 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 a uh, like I do on my videos, I think you've you've seen some, but there's a lot more. I've been doing them for years since 2007 or eight or something like that. I've been doing these videos. Put a little pH meter or pH paper into that mouthwash and see how acidic it is. If it's acid, it's bad. Period. If it if it burns inside your mouth, it's bad. If it feels bad, it's bad. It's like that Listerine. This is not, an this is not being cute. I'm not being cute here at all. If it feels bad, it's bad. Period. Your body's telling you. Don't put this shit in me. But you go, oh, it's good for you, even though it feels bad. I know, yeah. right? If it feels good, if it makes you feel good, you breathe, you salivate. That's your body sensing. Your mouth is sensing, ah, this is nutrition. This is good mm. shit. Yeah, <laughs> Versus, yeah. Um, It's one so, of those things which gets uh, taught to us <laughs> that we need to undergo some sort of strain or pain or, you know, that... <laughs> We, we've got a stress or something. And mm. as long as we're going through some kind of uh, uncomfortable stuff, then yeah. it's got to be good, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Listerine. That was one that I remember mm. when I used to use that. It was so painful. It is. I'd, because I'd it is painful. Because it is bad. Because it is killing your cells. Because it is toxic. It's wow. alcohol. It's 25% alcohol, my friend. 25% alcohol, 75% water. So all that bottle is alcohol and water, which is terrible by itself, acid as a preservative, benzoic acid, and two drops of essential oil, like literally two drops <laughs> of essential oils. What do those two essential oils do? Nothing, yet that's all the claim. It's essential oil, mathrins. No, it is alcohol and water <laughs> and color, and it's a floor cleaner. It's a, it's a, it's, <laughs> it, 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 literally, not metaphorically, check this out check out where Listerine came from and has it changed? No, it hasn't. It's just the marketing has changed. 
How is that legal? I so I don't understand. Tell like, me, bro. Tell me, bro. It's marketing. It's the the big corporates run the show. They tell they tell the universities and the professors who they sponsor what to say and what to research and right. what to publish and what not to publish. But where did they come from? Like the research came after. The, even if it's true, untrue, it came after, way after. It's not we scientifically made something and found it's great. Now we now we tell tell the world about it and call it toothpaste. No, we put the shit in the tubes. We sell we sell the shit out of it. We make the billions, and then we control. Then we make up science and control what happens from here on. Mister Lister, in the UK made a concoction of essential oils, alcohol, and water to wipe down, he was a surgeon, to wipe down surfaces, so bench tops and floors before <laughs> surgery because people died of infection. This is a great invention, a great innovation. The beginning of, of infection control in hospitals, basically. Great, fantastic thing. That was in the 1800s, basically. Mm. Or the late, 19, no, 1800s. It wasn't until his Lister solution got to the US, that guys, oh, what can we do with this concoction of alcohol and, and, and water and a couple of drops of essential oil? Ah, it's a gonorrhea wash, literally, not metaphorically, guys. Google this up, the history of Listerine. Gonor for gonorrhea, wash your genitals with it. Oh, it burns, but it's good for you. Oh my for, God. For uh, dandruff, for dandruff, for this, for that. And then, oh, bad mouth, bad breath. Everybody has bad breath. Let's use this same thing and, and give it to people for bad breath because oh, bad breath will, will you know you will not get married with bad breath this is literally an ad I'm not, this, none of this what I'm just saying is metaphors this is literal ads literal writing the literal brainwashing da 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 do this do that do that way this is back in the 20s and all these 1920s and all that stuff way later on hmm, maybe we should have some Universities do some scientific research for us to prove that we are right and we control and we sponsor whoever mm -hmm, we want. Mm -hmm. And then everybody in between copied, oh shit, they're making heaps of money from making, like literally it costs nothing. To, it's, it's, it's jack all to make this stuff. It, it yeah. costs zilch. Um, they're, you know, all this terrible stuff they're, they're selling, we can do the same because literally anybody can and everybody did. These guys made their own math wash. That's exactly like that. This, uh, this, this person took out the benzoate and still put the alcohol in and said it's uh, organic, al organic <laughs> alcohol, organic, what, what was it called? The organic alcohol or something like that. Well, what is organic alcohol? Alcohol is alcohol, man. It denatures collagen. It denatures cells. It, it destroys this. I don't care where it came from. Did it come from organic corn or... Or, or from we, alcohol is alcohol. Don't rinse with alcohol every day. Don't drink alcohol every day. Period. That's science. Stuff. It doesn't matter the source. It matters the effect. So the word natural is being abused a, a lot. Natural source. Natural source. Sorry. Natural. Natural product. Is it natural in source or natural in effect? Mm. Does it have a physiological balancing natural effect to the human body, or are you just saying natural in source? Because natural in source is irrelevant. Because everything is natural. Fluoride, cyanide, uranium, plutonium, <laughs> lead, all of them are 100% natural substances. This is not an argument, not being cute, not being gimmicky. Now, where the hell do they come from? From nature. Are they natural for the human body? No, leave them alone. Leave them where they are. <laughs> but this, this kind of wording is... is... So alcohol is, is not a natural substance for the body. It's natural in source, maybe, fine. Yeah. Is it natural for the body? No, period. Let's discuss that. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's really interesting when, when people hear certain things or if they, mm. if, it's, if it's advertised as saying natural and stuff, people don't really mm. think twice about it. Thank you. Don't Even if it says, it. huh? Don't, they don't question it. Natural, no. natural is great. Well, natural what? What does it mean? Are well, to be lying? honest with you, as, as, as a consumer. Well, they, they might be truthful, but yeah. ask. Check it out for yourself. But as a as a consumer, I'm thinking. Although we should be smart to check every single label, mm -hmm. people ain't got time for that, man. I mean, amen. You just you just want to buy your shit and you want to go. I just want to buy my stuff. I just want to go to be sitting there I looking know. at labels. There's queues of people. Everyone's in my way. I just want to get my stuff and leave the shop. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, what so, you mean, bro, and we're all busy, and that's why the owners should be. For 
every way to say the truth yeah. about what they make and what they make it for and who they are. Mm. So that this trust works quick. Like you said, we're all busy. We just want to get our stuff done, basically. Mm. Um, so we should be able to trust those who are making it for us and saying what they're saying. Yeah, absolutely. That's my question. Are people trustworthy? The manufacturers, are they trustworthy? It's, it's a question. Mm. I don't have the answer because you just, got, you just got to know who you're buying from. Once you know and you trust who you're buying from, and then it's okay. You don't have to read every, everything down there, but get to know them. So if they have no name, no face, they're just a brand, a multi-billion dollar brand right out there in, in your face. Um, and, and there's no, no, no human being that's responsible for what is being said or what is being made. You've got to question that. Like, what are they hiding? Who, who is behind this? One CEO comes, another CEO goes, profits go up, shares go up, shares go down, blah, blah, blah. But nobody really cares about the effect, the impact that they have on human society or human beings one-on-one -on, -one on a daily basis. Mm. Um, so just check out which companies, which manufacturers, which uh, suppliers you deal with because you, be you better know who they are and mm. whether you like to deal with them and trust them or not. I think the main thing is, as what you're saying is just checking the ingredients, even if you don't recognize them as a company, you might want to move from an existing brand, which you know is poison. And then you see mm. something else, which is new. If you don't recognize the ingredients and then you probably need to just like leave it, not pick it up in all fairness. And you got Google these days. Yeah. Google. <laughs> you got Google. Yeah. yeah. If you don't recognize the ingredients, look them up. Talk to Google. If it's something, let me simplify it for the listeners. What you just said is very powerful. You you got to look, look for some, look for things and try to understand them. But also, we're too busy to, to look for everything. So, because uh, both points are very valid, you know, we should be more aware, but we shouldn't be aware. We shouldn't be afraid all the time of everybody and everything. We should just become more and more aware. Mm. Do we have the time and all these things? Well, here's here's the simplest form I would, I would say. Number one. If it really matters to you, if it's something that you're going to be doing every single day to yourself, for yourself, or for your family, then you better find out for yourself and for your family if it's good or bad or indifferent or truly beneficial or truly honest or who's behind it. If it doesn't matter, if it's not a regular thing, if yeah, once in a while I go out and I don't know, somebody drinks, I don't drink alcohol at all. My friends you know, would have a beer, I would have a Coke. Is it being sold to me as a health drink? No. Am I choosing to drink it? Yes, but it's once in a while. I can't be bothered thinking, oh, that day I'm going to be healthy. Ah, fine, we'll have a Coke every now and then. I just don't buy it at home. Like, like we used to, as a kid, we used to have Coke all the time. We used to have to do this all the time, all the time, all the time. Terrible. Now I've changed that. So you, you can make changes, but and you will all make changes anyway. Don't be too strict on yourself. Modulate up and down like we, we said. But if it is something, this is, this is all I want to say. If it is something that's really important or something that you're going to be doing every single day for a lifetime, figure it out. You owe that to yourself and, and to your family. The rest of the stuff, don't be too fast. If you're going to eat some chips every now and then here and there, really, does it matter what's in them, what's not in them? It's all crap. <laughs> chips is chips, basically. Fine. Enjoy the crap 20% or 10% of the time. Move on, basically, with your life. But the 80% of the time, what you really do every day, or eight, well, at least 80% of the time, put inside your body, put inside your mind all the time. It's same thing with thoughts or whatever. Every now and then, watch a silly program on TV, have a laugh, ignore it, doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. But don't do that every day. Whatever you put in your mind, whatever you listen to every single day or 80% of the time, that should matter. You yeah. should know and understand and, and be intentional about what, what you do and put, it, uh, put in your mind and who you interact with and who you buy from. Mm. Let's say the 20% of the time, yeah, crazy stuff is crazy stuff. We're all human. We'll all do something crazy. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what is good or bad. It's just, okay, fine. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about um, a, a couple of other things that people put in their mouth. And um, one of them is braces. Do... Mm. Are, like I've know I've been told that amalgam fillings I know that mm -hmm. is bad, yes. but what about braces? Do braces uh, are, are they like 
EMF antennas or is that completely out? Like, you know, the way it holds the teeth as well, is, is there any way it kind of somehow affects the brain? Is there, is there anything wrong with it or is it, it's okay? You just talk about braces in general. Yeah. Not like different kinds of materials and I, I'm no expert on braces. That, perhaps right? we can perhaps. we can go on for a whole hour about this. Oh, really? Subject. Just on the braces yes, alone? In, in general, it, it, look, I'll answer, I'll answer it in general because we don't don't have all the time to cover it in, in detail. Hmm. Any metal, any metal substance on your body or in your body, including calcium. Calcium is a metal. Um, sodium is a metal, basically. Magnesium is, is, is a metal ion. Um, so all these are metals, technically. They're all directly uh, interacted up in, interacting with electromagnetic frequencies all around us. So all the energy fields that, that are within us and around us and we exist within, they're always being sensed, you know, perceived, interpreted, and, and, and translated translated like i said you, you, you digest energy we're digesting energy we're digesting light we are photosynthesizing we're photobiosynthesizing all the time anyway um so all these metallic objects will, will do that any other metals especially in a bigger concentrated form like uh, rings earrings uh, piercings metal fillings metal braces all these things um of course that that's that's what an antenna is so it's much more focused and concentrated emf uh, sensor basically from the course of an antenna that, than anything else do they emit it themselves well hopefully there's no radioactive substances that we're putting into <laughs> any of these metals uh, but usually it's like stainless steel or titanium or or um uh, usually the inert metals like that themselves mm -hmm. other than the mercury fillings which are 50 percent mercury the, the amalgam that's a whole different story like you just said it's toxic already of course mercury is toxic i mean is it a question really is mercury toxic um let me think how much is, is safe like uh, none just don't do it like oh great okay <laughs> like, period like what, what's the rest of the discussion here and yet oh the debates in my in my profession the attacks we get when we talk about these things for 20 years now like you wow. guys crazy what what are you debating like what are you talking about mm. it's mercury toxic in, in the mouth but anyway um so yeah metal braces i wouldn't say they're they're good or bad um it's what kind of emfs are you going around all the time anyway because any metal in the body will will be sensitive to to to, to emfs basically okay are braces in general good for you or not that's a whole different discussion in terms of what's the, what's the objective here to um and because you, you said you have kids right how old are they or your um, daughter yeah you have my, a daughter you said yeah that's right she is five five excellent mm. um so to, to summarize this and again that's a whole big subject for a big discussion but just to summarize this at five years old she i bet you she looks cute um i bet, <laughs> I bet she's beautiful and she's absolutely cute and she's this cute little monstrous thing that scares the heck out of you daddy and you know you think you're a big guy but your little daughter probably scares you more than anything else in the world. Like, ah, absolutely. Whatever she says goes basically. And then, you know, she screams, you're just shaking and all that stuff. Easily. Watch out for her development, not growth, development. We'll all grow somewhere or another. But are we growing developed or are we growing deformed? What I mean here is, and I, this is back to the portal, portal to, to whole body health being the mouth. Up to four, four, five, six years of age, it is what it is. They're just developing and they're going crazy and, and, and growing and all these things, and they all look cute. Between five and nine, you, you start to see more of their facial development and the, especially the mid face. The, the mid face is all math, basically, it's all math controlled. Your breathing is math controlled, your math itself is math controlled. Your, your facial structures, your smile, your, your, you, the width of your jaws, it's, it's all oral development. The skull up here is controlled by the brain. So when the brain grows to its maximum size 
and continues to pulse. That's the maximum size of the skull and it will never change. From about eight to nine years of age till death, our hat size never changes. This from eight? From about eight to nine, yeah. Eight um, to nine. Maybe 10 maximum. Wow. This, this doesn't change. Um, and actually we come out of, our, of, of the womb with, with a much bigger skull th than here. This is very small and then it grows and then it grows and then it grows. But all the way up to 20 to 20 something, this is supposed to be this whole lower part from underneath your eye all the way down. These are jaws, upper jaw, the maxilla, which contains the nose and it is the floor of the eye and it is the cheekbones. All that is maxilla or two of them, one maxilla, second maxilla together fuse in the middle and the mandible down here. These should grow out and sideways. If they don't, we shrink and shrivel. Then our nose is narrow, our breathing is messed up, our throat is closed up, our faces are narrow. Of course, our teeth are crooked because they're trying to fit into this little teeny weeny maxilla and so on and so forth. All that is controlled by tongue, by lips, by posture, by how we, we behave. So your muscles control your bones, your bones control your muscles. It's this continuous flow of, of everything, breathing, chewing, swallowing, development, therefore thinking, brain function, heart function, parasympathetic, the whole thing starts here. So from now on, from five onwards, just control, not control, check that your daughter is not math breathing. And if she's math breathing, whether she's during sleep or when she's awake, I had to learn this with my own daughter, basically, because she's 19 now. But when she was that age, cute as heck, four, four or five years of age, eight to nine, the whole face started to look like that. Uh, like, what's going on? Oh, she's been mad breathing for a while. We didn't even notice. What the hell is going on? And posture changed. Everything changed. Unfortunately, what happens in, in dentistry? Ah, oh, narrow jaws. Uh, crooked teeth, don't worry, just wait for until they're 12, 13. Bring them back, we'll take out some, some teeth and sh put braces on and shove them further back, the rest of the teeth. Stupidest thing ever. Instead of managing their development properly and make, widening their faces and widening their smiles and widening their jaws, thereby fitting the teeth in and opening their airways, we're letting them deform and then deforming them even more by pulling out teeth and putting braces on to pull them back. Should never happen like this. Wow. Should be the other way around. So you catch them five, six, seven, eight, nine. If anything's not forming properly, if their tongues are not working properly, whatever, train them on breathing, train them on tongue posture. It's called functional orthopedics or functional orthodontics, basically. Uh, but take your breathing techniques to train that, tape their mouth if they're mouth breathing, use functional appliances like little plates to develop, to widen their jaws. So they have wider jaws, wider smiles, wider airways, better postures and all that. So that by the time they're 11, 12, 13, 14, they either have no crooked teeth because everything is wide, or if there's mild twisting of the teeth, they still have so much space, but never take out healthy teeth and shove those kids' faces back with braces. So th this was my other comment on the braces part, because I thought that's where you were going first when you said braces. I'm like, oh, okay, but then you want to talk about the EMF for a second. This is much worse for than, than anything else. So braces mm -hmm. are very useful as part of a whole holistic, again, there's the word holistic, the whole human being and the whole lifetime of, of, of well-being in, in their development. So don't put the braces on after taking teeth out, because sh we shouldn't wait until that happens. Develop the jaws. There's many, many ways to do this. Let's, uh, let's not go in, into it right now because you, you mm. actually got to find a professional who can help you do that basically properly. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. Trains, uh, trainers, little my functional trainers that these little that kids could put in, breathing training, like I said, and all that. And you'll see it, their brains are working better. It's all about oxygenation, and oxygen flow and carbon dioxide balance with the breathing and, and, and all that. And of course, the, the function, dysfunction of this. Mm. And their aesthetics, you know. Big wide face, big wide smile versus looking yeah. like a bird down here. So what is it with the whole mouth breathing thing? Because I've heard it in a few places. You know, it's, it's all about nose breathing, stop breathing mm -hmm. through the mouth because it affects the microbiome in the mouth as well. Like, what, mm -hmm. what's the deal there? Like, if, if, for instance, I made it a habit, or let's say I breathe through, yeah, just breathe through my mouth all the time. 
whether yeah. during the day or like when I'm asleep, my mouth is open. What is the problem? Everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a simple enough answer? <laughs> oh, cheers. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you. Great summary. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but literally, joking aside, literally everything's wrong. Yeah. Um, first of all, it is not normal. Um, yet it, normal is not common and common is not normal. Okay. So it is very common, but it is not normal. Yeah. Uh, it's very common today in, in today's society and the last, I don't know, maybe 50, 60, 100 years, basically, but not historically and not in, in so-called primitive. They're not primitive. They're primordial societies. <laughs> they're not primitive, really. We're, most of us are the primitive ones these days, mm -hmm. um, the way we behave, basically. Uh, so primordial societies and or you know, healthy, healthy individuals never mouth breathe. Never. Simply never. Unless intention, I don't know, you're doing a specific exercise, I don't know, the Wim Hof method or something like that. Yeah, that, that's moments in time. You're in, doing an exercise for a reason. That, that's all different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sitting there you know, oh, like that, or sleeping. Like that, I've seen people like that. That yeah. is not yeah. normal. It is common, but it is not normal. Mm. And that's, a, that's, that's a disease by, its, by itself, basically, because... Everything goes wrong when I said that. I, I, I meant it. It's not a joke. Your mouth goes, goes to hell. Oh, sorry, what happens inside your mouth goes to hell. So your microbiome gets, gets messed up because you're, you're drying up. Basically, you're drying up that mucosa. Like, like we said before, you're drying up your mucosa. You're drying up your, your whole mouth because it's not supposed to be dry. It's supposed to be wet. Your, your guts, no part of your guts can ever be dry for any more than seconds not even a minute before it breaks down. None. And this is gut, okay? Period. We, we said, I said that many times before, and I'm saying it again. This is gut. This is the opening to your gut. This is the gut right here. In your mouth. Should not be dry. Your downstairs can't be dry. Your guts can't be dry. Not for moments even. Like seconds is too much. Well, imagine half an hour, two hours, three hours, eight hours every night over a lifetime. What the, what the hell do you think is gonna happen? Everything breaks down. Your cells break down. Your mucosa breaks down. Your gums break down. Teeth. Teeth don't need much. They just need to be soaked in an alkaline environment, not an acid, because acid dissolves them, and that's it. That's, that's the only thing that can damage teeth is acid or lack of mineral. That's why they're unhydroxyapatite. So when they go dry, okay, they can break down, basically, but it's mostly your cells, the, the living tissues. That's inside the mouth. So gum disease, tooth decay, bad breath, bad bacteria, broken down gums, all that hell breaks loose in here. That's locally when, when you breathe through your mouth. In the meantime, the whole time you're breathing through your mouth, you're breathing in dirty air. You're not filtering it because we don't have nasal hair in our mouths. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> <laughs> nasal hairs and the mucus in the, mouth, in the nose and, and, and all these things. Basically, the nose is made for breathing because it's a filter. Mm. I, I can't explain that any, any easier than that we don't filter air through our mouths. So it's not just detrimental for the mouth, and it is, it's detrimental for what goes into the lungs because it's all dirty air, unfiltered, unhumidified air. So the nose is not just a filter, it's actually a humidifier for air. The mouth does not humidify, to the contrary, it gets dry itself and gets messed up itself mm -hmm. um, w when this happens. Uh, thirdly, you're messing up totally with the, not just, the pattern and the frequency of your breathing, which you are, and that's a big problem. If you've done any breathing, I'm sure you, Roger, have done a lot of breathing training um, with, with your training and, and, and all these things. The diaphragmatic breathing, uh, the uh, basically open up your airway, lift up your head, open up your airway, let, let the air in, don't <clears throat> constrict yourself. Otherwise, no air, no regular air, good quality air, you're stuffed basically. It's not only you can't, um, perform well which you definitely can't but you can't even survive long term you can't thrive long term so uh, quality of air going in really bad we lose a lot of carbon dioxide when you're breathing through your mouth you're losing so much carbon dioxide it messes up your the, your sensors in the back of the uh, the cerebellum and the medulla the, basically the, the brain stem the part in the back of our brain is what controls our breathing 
again through the vagus nerve by the way so lungs and all that even the diaphragm it's all vagus nerve um well vagus and accessory nerves anyway the ones go next to it so when you when you've got your mouth open co2 goes down when that gets sensed in in, in the middle of back there your breathing slows down so Carbon dioxide is not good or bad. It's necessary and vital part of that balancing process in our bodies. The oxygen, 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 carbon dioxide is bad. Oxygen, carbon dioxide is bad. No, it's not good or bad. Too much oxygen will absolutely kill you. Absolutely. Actually, right. people who train, again, I'm talking about, about you guys. I'm not, I'm not an athlete in any way, as you can tell. I'm a mental athlete, <laughs> but not a, not, not a body athlete <laughs> at all. But um, the, the big thing lately is what? height training low oxygen training right what the hypoxia control oxygen training or 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 high training that you know train mimicking environments that are in the mountains basically with with low oxygen hypoxia and, and, uh, hypoxic exactly, training. hypoxia training basically yeah so mm-hmm. they either they take you up to high altitudes to train you there or they mimic it in gyms right you've got rooms now that mimic yeah. that environment uh low, low oxygen uh, to train your cells to use oxygen more efficiently and all these things because too much oxygen is actually quite toxic to cells. Mm. Yet not enough oxygen is deadly. Not toxic is deadly, <laughs> not enough oxygen mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So it's, it's not oxygen is good, carbon dioxide is bad as whatever. It's balance. It's how much, it's how we use them and all these things. So keep it simple. Uh, you lose too much carbon dioxide, you lose control over your breathing. That's the it. nose is meant to do that. The nose is meant to be wide inside wide outside because the jaw has developed properly like we just said hopefully before um and so that it can control the volume of air going in and out so it keeps the carbon dioxide saturation inside the blood while the oxygen is going through so that so we've got so in the medulla and in here the the carotid bodies is two little gang not little small big they're actually they're quite big uh they're chemoreceptors. They're like gangly, two ganglion around, like a plexus of nerves around the, the carotid arteries, just, just, just behind our ears and jaw down there, that are constantly sen- sensing oxygen and more importantly, carbon dioxide concentration and acidity, the pH of our blood. So they're, they're, they're sensing all that that's going up to the brain, giving feedback the medulla back there, ooh, we need to breathe more, we need more carbon dioxide, we need less carbon dioxide, we need blah, blah, blah. So the, the chemoreceptors basically, right around the carotid. Obviously, mm. if you lose your carotid, you're dead anyway, so it, it doesn't matter whether that thing works or not. <laughs> so yeah. This is a whole, this is very vital up here. Very vital what's going on all around here. Everything's being sensed the whole time. So uh, snoring is bad, that's suffocation. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. When you open your mouth, when you open your mouth, you're gonna plug up your your airway. If you've ever done CPR, the, the first thing is in, in CPR, A B C, airway, breathing, circulation, mm-hmm. airway. What do we do? Somebody's on the ground, you lift their head up like this. You clear you, you clear their mouth, make sure there's nothing clogging it up, but you lift the the head. This is open airway. <laughs> this is closed airway. Guess what? Ah, the car will yeah. yeah. So this has to be shut. This has to be up. Open airway. Morning and and day night and and day and every every other time. Would that be the That's better way to sleep? If uh, let's say somebody snores uh, somehow, yes. I don't know, have their head up or something. Yes. Yeah. Right. Tape, okay. Tape their mouth, or we. I, I make these special guards. We open the airway with a laser in in the back if the throat is dangling. If the if the soft fat is hanging down, mm-hmm. closing like a curtain. We, I, I use a laser called um, uh, the Light Walker. The Light Walker. The Light Walker, such a cool name, eh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. For you told a snow lace to open up the back of the airway, but that does not replace or change the fact that we need to keep the, the, the mandible up and forward together like this, so that the tongue is up and forward as well for that. So it's, it's this plus that. Yes, this is always a better position. So either tape or these special guards that keep you close together vertically. So, so this is closed all the time. 
actually and that's why sleeping on your side is always better than sleeping on your back you see that here only fix it's a How it's a mouth look tape. like um, oh, it's a mouth tape. yes yeah we it's weird because the time. huh we use tape all the time we use just yeah. normal 3m tape but which what would you choose this one what does this one do um a tape it's clinically proven to improve Oh, proven to improve breathing sleep quality the thing is i don't sleep with my mouth open that i'm aware mm. of but mm. i guess i was listening to a podcast and someone mentioned it talking about mouth taping being good and i just thought you know what let me give it a go i didn't feel like my sleep was any better um but i think this would probably come in handy if i'm really tired when i'm really tired i think that's when i snore so mm. <clears throat> Um, I think I, I don't know. I'll probably use it, it then. If if you're not naturally a mouth breather, not naturally, habitually a mouth breather, yeah, which is a great thing that you're not, then the tape won't help you because you're already closed <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. If you're a habitual mouth breather, uh, that that's when you the tape really makes a difference mm. in the snoring and everything else because it's training you to be more normal. Uh, but like you said, if if we're extremely exhausted um, after a night out or drinking alcohol or whatever, alcohol will always loosen all your muscles and go, ah, that snoring, open mouth and all that stuff. So there are special occasions where that could happen that you open up and, and, and lose control. But generally, if you, and by all means, this whole hour and a half now that we've been talking, I haven't noticed that your mouth is open at all. Of, of course, unless we are talking. Speaking, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is talking or opening to put in a mouth in there. That's the only time my mouth is open. That's great. That's fantastic. Rest of the time when you're resting and listening to me, I can see it. Your mouth is shut. You're breathing through your nose. That's exactly what it should be. Perfect. So yeah. if you're naturally that, great. If you're not, just notice it on yourself, on your kids uh, and people who you love. Like, ooh, they're not naturally or, or not okay, naturally they should be, uh, but they're not normally uh, breathing through their nose. They're breathing more through the mouth. Their mouth is just like this the whole time, or they're sleeping. That we should change, mm. especially if they're developing kids. Like I said, with your daughter, with the, the five-year-old, if she starts to, to mouth breathe now for the next three, four years, her whole face will grow deformed because they're they're growing like butter now. Yeah, they're either yeah. developing, or they're not, the, or they're mal developing basically. So watch that. Uh, for now hmm. oh, lots of yeah. things to talk about my friend yeah yeah I've got to see some guests now at the, the clinic at the, oh. at the laser institute yeah okay so okay clinic right now uh, uh, uh. early morning for me it's good night for you oh, yeah yeah Man. evening time so like quarter to 11 wow. so yeah man I'm, i think i'm good i think i've got i was gonna ask a, a couple of other questions but it's all right they're not they're not like that important. I think we covered the main things. Well, I anyhow. think we should do another podcast. There's a lot I, more questions that I would love to man, answer. Yeah. There's, there's so there's much more. I think we should so just much. do a separate one. Absolutely. I would love think to, the next man. One I love this conversation. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's enough. exciting. It's good, bro. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. So let's catch up soon. Set something else hmm. up. But before we go, what is your website for people to, you know, come and check out your your serums and your, your mouthwash. Your, your, your that, that'd be the easiest pressure. one to give to everyone globally. It's mm -hmm. www, well, not the top, obviously, Dr. Hishams, D-R-H-I-S-H-A-M-S dot N-Z. Okay. That, that's for the products. That'll be the easiest one to give everybody to, uh, by the products. And there's, yes. there's the, like, the laser training website for the dentist. Then there's the, the clinic, which is only in Auckland. Then there's, there's many websites, basically. But this is the one that's most, yeah. Yeah, yeah. People from the UK and everybody else. Like, oh, I can get something from this. I can learn something. I can buy something from this doctor because they won't come here for the dental treatment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah they're that, like that committed, so, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the most useful website. For you, for you to share uh, from my side. That's awesome. Most educational, most useful, most global, basically. The rest are more, ah, this is only for dentists. It's amazing stuff, but only if you're a dentist and you <laughs> want to learn something about lasers, like, oh shit, what? Oh man. <laughs> um, then I've got about the Noble Thor pod, the laser. I'll, I'll send you a list of websites in terms of hierarchy, which ones I think this one being the main one that I would mm -hmm. like you to share, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, 
and the other ones are just for your interest just for like oh yeah i'll just check out what else hisham does basically um, that's awesome yeah i could just easily yeah. put it in the show notes and people can just like click on it and check it out if it's something that will be beautiful man. of interest to them and what about your instagram handle like wh- which which one would you like to share because i know you've got a Pro- probably one. the same thing the dr hisham's dr. the product one yeah yeah so my personal one says laser genius because that's why I started with laser training and all these things. Laser genius slash Dr. Hisham mm-hmm. or Hisham only. It doesn't matter. Laser genius it says, and that's personal. The other one is Dr. Hisham's holistic oral care. Um, I'll, I'll send you all of these things. That's awesome. And link, one link, more link, thing. Link, link. So you don't have to think about it. Like, oh, that's the one. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Have you got perhaps, um, I don't know, maybe a discount which you can share for my listeners? Yes, Something. we did create that. I think I asked you that in, in one of them there, if, if you allow us to do that. In the UK especially, actually, mm. ooh, that's the one that we should do. Um, uh, like share my website, yes, in general, but if they want to buy the products in the UK, I'd much prefer they bought it from Functional Self in, okay. in the UK because... There are distributors there. They're the guys, uh, Brad and, and Warren, who distribute the, the Bulletproof Coffee in the UK. Okay, right. I, um, I don't know these, these people. Okay, sorry. I, I thought you met them at the, at the Biohacking Summit last year. Oh, you know, I can't, I can't remember them. the no. names. Too many people. Too many yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many people that day. So, yeah. so, so yeah. they're the Bulletproof distributors in the UK. Okay. Uh, for, for Dave, and they're also the distributors for our products in the UK. So I'd much prefer if the people bought it from there. Okay. If it's in the UK or Europe, because it's local, it's easy shipping, da da da. Because if they buy it from New Zealand from here, we ship it from here. It's crazy shipping and it takes three weeks or whatever. It takes a lot. I bought so, so many things from New so the Zealand discount, and Australia. Yeah. The discount code, which will be, actually it is, it should already be active. Um, uh, will, it, it's, it's 10% for, for your listeners to, to, to get 10% off any order. Okay. Will apply on our website, yes, but it will apply also on functional self. So I'll send you I'll send you all of that. I'll send you functionalself.co.uk website and the discount code that we made for you, obviously. Um, I asked I asked them to make one for you. Well, for you, for your listeners, to give yeah, yeah. to your listeners. Um, and usually usually it's very simple. I'll just see if they sent it. Um, that's all good. We can we can go through that it, another it, it time. It will be something like RS10. Yeah. So Roger Snipes 10. So Okay. Well, Snipes so 10 is okay. normally so what I the, use, but it's all good. Singing? Snipes singing? 10 is... Snipes 10. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah. Okay, I'll get to change. It, it's, it's just a code on, on the thing. Yeah. I'll get to change. That sounds cool. Snipes 10. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. All good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just brilliant, type man. Type in Snipes 10 and you get a 10% discount every time and check out. Da, da, da. Yeah, that sounds cool. That's okay. wicked, man. That's great. That's great. Mr. Dr. Hisham, it's been brilliant. Brother. Serious. When's part oh, two? Man. Next week? No, nah, joke. <laughs> we'll talk, man. We'll talk. Could be let's, next week let's, or the week after, but very soon. Yeah. yeah to do it, man. Let's set something up for sure. All right, Good brilliant, man. man. Thank you, brother. You have a fantastic morning, you afternoon, too. and the rest of your day, and we'll catch up real soon. Awesome.